entitled Pass on the Salt. And welcome to those of you who are attending this lecture for the first time. It seems like a long time ago that I spoke with some of you in person about sodium. I believe that March the 11th was actually the last day we were able to meet in large groups. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected us all in many ways. It has disrupted our normal routines requiring us to cancel all group activities, religious services, shopping excursions, close our restaurants, and isolate ourselves in our homes for our safety and the safety of others. When you do have to go out in public, here at Edenwald, you are required to cover your face with a mask. So even when we do see people in person, we never see a smile. All of these necessary safety measures cause feelings of social isolation, which can have an impact on our nutritional status. Isolating in our homes for most people translates into a decrease in physical activity. Although I did speak to one resident by phone the other day who told me that he walks a mile and a half every day in his apartment. He has a large apartment. For some people, a decrease in physical activity can cause a decrease in appetite. I have spoken to some residents who are experiencing weight loss due to the decrease in appetite. On the flip side, some people are eating more than they need, snacking a lot, out of boredom, and reaching for comfort foods. I'm going to quote an article from Psychology Today from September of 2016, and I quote, Comfort foods provide pleasure or temporarily make us feel better. Comfort foods are typically energy dense, high fat, and sweet. Eating food high in fat, sugar, or salt activates the brain's reward system. For example, chocolate has a strong effect on mood, generally increasing pleasant feelings and reducing tension. We tend to associate certain foods with members of our family, social gatherings, and people taking care of us, such as Thanksgiving holidays with family. When we feel lonely, we crave these foods to give us comfort and security. Here at Eden World, we provide you with a menu to choose from each week. The menu provides many healthy options, with a few comfort foods as well such as red velvet cake and chocolate chip cookies. At the end of this lecture, I will go over this week's menu with you. Although you've already made your menu selections for this week, I will give you some food for thought and some ideas for how to make healthy menu selections for the future. This lecture is entitled Improving Your Mood with Food. I will be speaking about how different nutrients can affect your mood. I will be speaking about situational depression as well as clinical depression and discussing how these conditions are impacted by nutrition. For anyone taking antidepressant medication, this information should in no way cause you to stop taking your medication as you make changes in your diet. No antidepressant medication should be discontinued or decreased without consulting with your physician. For people suffering from depression, ranging from mild to severe, there are many modifications you can make to your diet which may improve your symptoms. A large study from the American Journal of Psychiatry showed that women who ate a healthy diet filled with vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and high quality meat and fish were 30% less likely to suffer from depression and anxiety. Women who ate a typical Western diet filled with processed foods and sugar 
who are 50% more likely to be depressed. The first food group I want to speak about is the carbohydrate group. Consumption of carbohydrate-rich foods can affect brain chemistry. When I speak of carbohydrates, I'm talking about grains, such as bread, cereals, pasta, and rice, as well as fruits and vegetables, legumes, such as beans and peas, and natural sweeteners, like sugar and honey. When we consume carbohydrates, our brains release a mood-boosting brain chemical called serotonin. Sometimes, when you crave carbohydrates like sweets, it may be related to low serotonin activity in the brain. When consuming carbohydrates, choose whole grains and fresh fruits and vegetables without added sugars. Limit processed foods, fast foods, and foods high in sugar commercial baked goods, and sweets. The next food group I want to speak about is the protein group. Foods like turkey, tuna, and chicken contain the amino acid tryptophan, which may help you make serotonin. Eating something with protein several times a day can help to clear your mind and boost your energy. Good sources of healthy proteins include beans, peas, lean beef, low-fat cheese, fish, milk, poultry, soy products like tofu, and yogurt. I would like to next speak about antioxidants. Antioxidants prevent cell damage from free radicals. The brain is susceptible to damage from free radicals, but this can be minimized by eating a diet high in antioxidants. Some of the antioxidants would include beta carotene, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Beta carotene can be found in apricots, broccoli, carrots, cantaloupe, collards, peaches, pumpkin, spinach, and sweet potato. Beta carotene is especially found in the orange fruits and vegetables. And what, one good thing about beta carotene is it's not heat sensitive. So if you cook foods that are high in beta carotene, the heat does not destroy the beta carotene. You can tell this because like, if you were to cook carrots, they don't change in color. Vitamin C, on the other hand, is an antioxidant which is heat sensitive. So if you cook a vegetable that's high in vitamin C, you want to make sure not to cook it for too long so that you don't destroy the vitamin C. Some foods that are high in vitamin C include blueberries, broccoli, grapefruit, kiwi, oranges, peppers, potatoes, tomatoes, and strawberries. And finally, vitamin E is another antioxidant that is good to include in your diet. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you don't want to take uh, vitamin D, high doses of vitamin D in supplements, but if there is vitamin D in your multivitamin, that's fine. Natural food sources of vitamin E would include nuts and seeds, vegetable oils, and wheat germ. Next, I'd like to speak about other vitamins that can affect mood, and that would be vitamin B12 and folate. Vitamin B12 and folate are vitamins that can improve symptoms of depression. The following foods are high in vitamin B12 and folate. Beetroot, and I'm speaking of the round, bulbous part of the beet, the red part, not the leaves. Lentils, almonds, spinach, liver, chicken, and fish. It's very easy to check your vitamin B12 level. Your physician can just do a blood test to see if you're low in vitamin B12. Um, there are some people who will tell you that if you have low energy, it's because you need a vitamin B12 injection. And I would never get a vitamin B12 injection without first having your physician do a blood test to see if you're actually low in vitamin B12. There are many causes of low energy. Vitamin B12 can be one of them, but there are many others. So have your vitamin B12 level checked before you do any high supplementation of vitamin B12. But of course, getting vitamin B12 from your food is a safe way to get a healthy dose. 
Next, we're going to spend a little more time on another vitamin which is very important, and that would be vitamin D. Vitamin D is the only nutrient that your body produces when it's exposed to sunlight. 50% of the world's population may not get enough sun, and 40% of the United States residents are deficient in vitamin D. This is partially because people spend more time indoors, wear sunscreen when they're outside, and eat a Western diet, which is low in good sources of vitamin D. Although vitamin D is activated within our bodies when we are exposed to sunlight, those of us living in Baltimore are too far from the equator to receive adequate UVB rays from the sun for adequate vitamin D synthesis between the months of November and May. Add to that the fact that we bundle up in the winter and the sun stays lower in the sky, vitamin D deficiency has been linked to depression and mood disorder. Good food sources of vitamin D include salmon, sardines and herring, canned tuna, egg yolks, fortified breakfast cereals. Now you have to turn and read the label on your breakfast cereal to see if it's fortified with vitamin D. The same would be for, for fortified breads. Juices, milk, and one food that's very high in natural vitamin D is mushrooms. The recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D is 600 international units per day for adults between the ages of 51 and 70, and 800 international units for adults over the age of 70 years. Most multivitamins, especially those designed for adults over 50, contain between 400 and 800 international units of vitamin D. Vitamin D supplements, in addition to what you would get in your multivitamin, should not be taken without recommendations from your physician. Your physician can check your vitamin D level and let you know if you need a supplement. There are certain medications that can, that can cause a vitamin D deficiency. These medications include laxatives, steroids like prednisone, some cholesterol-lowering drugs like cholestyramine and cholestipol, seizure drugs like phenobarbital and phenytoin, which is also known as dilantin, and the weight loss drug orlistat. If you take any of these medications, continue taking your medications. Increase your the foods in your diet, which are good sources of vitamin D, and have your physician check your vitamin D level. Now I want to step away from food for a second, and I want to talk a little bit about inflammation. Most likely the link between mood and food is inflammation. Eating more processed foods tends to lead to more inflammatory markers in the body. And inflammation is linked to depression as well. Experimental studies have shown that foods high in omega-3 fatty acids, like fatty fish, which would include salmon, trout, oysters, and halibut, flaxseed, walnuts, and others, help with brain neuron function and even improve brain plasticity. Brain plasticity is the ability of the brain to modify its connections or rewire itself. A Mediterranean-style diet is an example of an anti-inflammatory diet, which is good for brain health and individuals suffering from depression. In 2017, a researcher at Deakin University in Australia conducted the SMILES trial. It was a 12-week parallel group, single blind, randomized controlled trial to see if nutritional interventions were as effective at treating depression as medication and talk therapy. The patients in the diet group followed a modified Mediterranean diet for 12 weeks. The modified Mediterranean diet includes whole grains, fruits and vegetables, legumes, low-fat, unsweetened dairy products, raw, unsalted nuts, lean red meat, chicken, fish, eggs, and olive oil. Foods that are discouraged on the, on the modified Mediterranean diet include sweets, 
refined cereals, fried food, fast food, and processed meat. A maximum of two sugar-sweetened beverages and two alcoholic beverages per week were allowed in this diet. At the end of 12 weeks, 32% of the patients no longer met the criteria for depression. Now, I also want to speak a little bit about artificial sweeteners and the effect that they can have on depression. Aspartame is what I want to speak of. If you suffer from depression, you should avoid the use of the artificial sweetener aspartame, which is found in the little blue packets which are sold as neutral sweet and equal. Aspartame is metabolized into three different chemicals, aspartic acid, methanol, and phenylalanine. An increase in aspartic acid and phenylalanine can cause a decrease in serotonin and dopamine production in the body. This can increase symptoms of depression. A good alternative to aspartame would be stevia. It's derived from the leaves of the plant species stevia rhododendra. People who suffer from depression will not find an increase in their symptoms if they use stevia as their artificial sweetener. So I put my email out on the internet for residents of Ingwall to send questions in advance um, pertaining to this lecture because I wouldn't be able to accept questions at the end of the lecture like we usually do. Several residents sent in questions. I'm going to answer their questions today. The first question comes from Mrs. O, and Mrs. O asked, what do you think of Prevagen and other memory aids that can, be per that can be purchased across the counter? So my answer would be, the active ingredient in Prevagen is epicorin, a protein originally found in jellyfish, which you probably heard on their commercials. The makers of Prevagen, which are Quincy Bioscience, have been under investigation for false claims that Prevagen improves memory since 2017. To this date, there have been no studies published proving that Prevagen improves memory, at least I am not able to find any, so I can't recommend Prevagen at this time. Another question came from Mrs. G. Mrs. G asked me, how would you evaluate the nutritional advantages a plain low-fat yogurt as opposed to fruit-flavored yogurt. Could you see that Ingwald has sufficient plain yogurt? The answer would be that yogurt provides us with several beneficial nutrients, the macronutrient protein, the mineral calcium, and probiotics. All yogurt contains some sugar because it's made from milk, which is a rich source of lactose. I'm going to compare three different brands of yogurt, and then I'll answer your question. At Ingwald, here we have some comparison. At Ingwald, we currently serve Yoplait fruit-flavored yogurt. A six-ounce cup contains 19 grams of sugar, including 13 grams of added sugar, contains 26 grams of carbohydrate, six grams of protein, and 220 milligrams of calcium. Another yogurt that we carry is Chobani Greek yogurt, which contains 13 grams of sugar, including 9 grams of added sugar, 16 grams of carbohydrate, 11 grams of protein, but only 100 milligrams of calcium. And in plain yogurt contains 15 grams of sugar, 18 grams of carbohydrate, 10 grams of protein, and a whopping 400 milligrams of calcium. The healthiest choice depends on your health and your reason for eating yogurt. If you are a diabetic, the yogurt which is lowest in carbohydrate would be the best choice for you, in this case, the Shivani Greek yogurt. If you have osteoporosis and you're looking for a boost in your calcium intake, the Dan and Plain yogurt would be the best choice. If you are on dialysis or you have chronic kidney disease, None of these yogurts are a good choice because they are all too high in phosphorus and potassium. In answer to Mrs. G's request, we will be ordering a case of Dan and Plain yogurt. That's one that we don't currently carry, so you can order that in the future. And if we have a run on Dan and yogurt, then we can order more than one case at a time. So that's all the questions that were sent to me. 
But I want to encourage residents now to be for this lecture on brain health. If you have any further questions, you can please email me at crosenfeld at Thank you.